My driving principle in life has been to always leave any and every space I enter better than I found it. And this stems from uh, my background and, and growing up uh, in a Catholic school training. Uh, and I try to apply that uh, even till now in any space that I enter. My name is Lola Niola Defesa, and I'm the Associate Dean for Graduate and Professional Education in College of Engineering and a University Diversity and Social Transformation Professor of Chemical Engineering at the University of Michigan. As I move through academic spaces, I see challenges that people who look like me face, both as a woman and as a person of color in STEM. And in my mindset of leaving things better than I found them, I find myself drawn to what institutional changes can be made to make engineering more equitable for women and people of color. The first question, of course, I asked myself was, why? Why is this needed? The major issue with engineering spaces is that they aren't enough women and there aren't many people of color. So any and all change uh, in the short term must focus on addressing this very problem. Interventions that will help make these spaces more welcoming and inclusive for all. I also recognize that this change or changes have to be system-wide. This resonates with me uh, as a trained chemical engineer because that is uh, at the core of what we do. Thinking about an oil refinery with multiple units, any change in one unit has to be accounted for with units up and downstream for uh, changes that are going to be lasting in academia. We need to take this system approach as well. So what does it all mean for the major issue of lack of women and people of color in engineering? It means we have to make changes at multiple points in the pipeline to create the sustained system level change that is needed. For me, I have chosen to focus on three critical stages. First, building a stronger social and academic network for early career scholars. But I recognize a critical piece of achieving that first step uh, is looking uh, to increase in a meaningful way the representation of Black and Latino, Latina faculty in engineering. And once they are brought in, we must advocate for change to address funding disparity that disproportionately harm Black and Latino and Latina faculty to support their ability to stay in academia long term. So why focus on early career trainees? I'm convinced I'm here today because of the wonderful early career training I experienced. It's the number one reason why I stayed in academia. Therefore, it's heartbreaking for me to exist in a space where I don't see all graduate students having this wonderful experience. This was my biggest motiv motivating factor. I want to change the environment so that all graduate students, regardless of their gender, racial, or ethnic background, can have this wonderful experience. Within that mindset of leaving the space better than I found it, I reflected on my own graduate experience and what made the difference. I had a social circle to support me within my department. It allowed me that freedom to go into my science with the ability to be creative and make mistakes. This was missing for some graduate students, so why not create that safety net for all graduate students? I'm an engineer, so the solution is that we must engineer that space. For us in chemical engineering at Michigan, that space is our peer mentoring program. I was betting that if people, regardless of their background, found commonalities with one another, then people would develop this safety net too. And that bet has paid off. What we've done is employed senior graduate students who have interest in serving as role models, and we have them serve as peer mentors. Each senior grad student has a group of five to six first year students, and their job is to support the students socially and academically. During each week, a mentor is expected to hold a study session with the group, lowering the barrier that women and students of color typically face in joining study groups. And each mentor is also given funds to put together social and extracurricular activities, camping, rock climbing, dinners, for example, with a goal of building stronger communities within their group. We've run this program a couple of years now and we've seen numerous benefit. The biggest being 
that our first year class have been more plugged in and engaged with one another. We are also seeing a wonderful unexpected benefit for international students. Turns out that participating in group, in this group, lower the language and cultural barrier that they typically experience in the past. And for the mentors, they get this wonderful rare opportunity to hone their leadership skill while they themselves are still student. Skills that will serve them well for numerous careers that they can pursue after their PhD. Importantly, normalizing this experience for all our first year students created the expected outcome that all students were thriving and successful with their academic milestone. Very, very few PhD students now fill the qualifying exam, for example. As I take in the success of the peer mentor program to date, I realized that my experiences with my identity factored strongly into understanding the need for this type of program and helped me understand how to structure it. In general, we know that our experiences shape our trajectory. Therefore, it is critical for young scholars of color, especially black women and Latina, to see other faculty who look like them and support them to help them succeed. So the core question was, how can we increase this meaningful representation of people of color, especially women, into faculty? This led to the next prof, Pathfinder. Next Prof Pathfinder is a national program that supports first-year graduate students in finding a path to academia. Students from all over the nation come to U of M to learn about faculty career paths. We share our experiences, demystify the hidden information, and talk about academic freedom. We also talk about challenges and roadblocks in, in the academy to highlight that these experiences are one that all students face regardless of their gender or racial or ethnic background. And we give them tools that allows them to plow through. The hope is that this program will help more students, especially people of color and women, to make it further into the pipeline, a necessary component to diversify in the faculty ranks. As more diverse people enter the professoriate, we need to ensure that we have structure in place to help them persist. For engineering faculty, research funding is a critical piece of that. I know this from my own experience and from the lens of leaving a space better than I found it. It is critical that we ensure that the next generation of faculty of color have more equitable access to research funding. This motivation led us to the Fund Black Scientists Initiative. NIH data reported a decade ago, which is still valid today, showed that faculty of color, especially black faculty, were less likely to receive NIH funding. And this disparity was not linked to the quality of their scholarship or the quality of their institution. Why is this important? Research dollars are the currency by which all faculty move through the academic pipeline. And faculty of color should not be disadvantaged in navigating the systems. So a number of my colleagues, especially women who care deeply about more representation and this relationship with faculty funding, we decided to work together to raise awareness. So we wrote an editorial published in the journal Cell, re-highlighting this issue and calling on all NIH investigators to help us to push for change. Much to our delight, within hours of the publication coming out, Hundreds of thousands of people joined the call for NIH to fix their funding process and fund black scientists. To date, the article has reached an online audience of more than 15 million, and more than 30 outlets have covered the initiative. And by and large, the response has been overwhelmingly positive, that the NIH should do something. We also called on the newly appointed Director of the Office for Science and Technology Policy for the Biden administration, Eric Lander, saying that the time is now for him to ask NIH and all other funding agencies to eliminate any disparity, racial, ethnicity, gender, that exists within their funding, funding portfolio. We are delighted that the NIH has heard our call and Dr. Lander agrees that this is mission critical for the United States research enterprise. So what do we need to move this work forward? These three examples, including building more supportive peer system for students, preparing black and Latino Latina scientists to navigate the mostly white academy, 
and fixing the funding system are all ways that I've tried to leave academic spaces better than I found them. I hope that anyone seeing this video recognizes that it is to our disadvantage as a nation for our scientific enterprise to remain segregated, the void of talent from a significant portion of our country. Therefore, we must all work together in our various spaces to drive system level changes that make those same spaces better for the generation coming up.